Peace, y'all. What's good? I'm not starting with the intro beat today. They've been hitting me up on for some fucking revenue sharing shit they talking about on YouTube. I have a funny feeling it might be have something to do with maybe the sample that's in the intro. So guess what? Fuck that intro right now. How about that? How about that? Uh, everybody, join the room. Join the room. See, I got that eternal. Got that eternal. It's ah, nice. Yeah. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. On this knowledge cipher day. All being born to knowledge. Um, Buck Brugel, I see you. Uh huh. M. Wreck, I see you. Peace, y'all. I feel a little weird starting without the music and shit, but it is what it is. Uh, Leah Sawyer, what's good? I see y'all. Buckshot, heck nine. Peace, 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 peace. Uh, we're going to get into it. We got breaking news. We have breaking news, some unfortunate news. Unfortunate hip hop news. Um, earlier today, uh, I first saw it on my brother, um, on my brother Ed Lover's page that um, DJ Mr. C. Uh, Calvin LeBron uh, passed away today. Um, right now, I don't have any information on uh, his passing, how he passed, why he passed. Um, all I can say is hip hop has definitely, you know, suffered a blow by the loss of somebody like Mr. C. Um, yeah, man. Mr. C, like as a DJ, as a hip hop DJ, like, I got to put him up there with probably some of the greatest all around DJs of life. Ha 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 I see you, Buck. Oh, that's where you get that from? That's where the Brugal comes from? Brugal? I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Um Oh, and I murdered that 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 shit that you sent me and shit. I'm still fucking with it. But that beat that you sent me to flip, I flipped the I flipped the flipped. Anyway. <clears throat> I don't want to get distracted. Uh, yeah, Mr. C as a DJ, as an all-around DJ, he's probably in the top. I know it's, you know, people throw these things around, but he might be in the top five of all time, all-around DJs. Like, please understand... Okay, not only was he connected to, um, we first we first got introduced to Mr. C from the greatness of an MC 
like Big Daddy Kane. Shout out to my brother, Big Daddy Kane. First of all, I want to say condolences to um, Mr. C's family, to all his friends, his loved ones, um, and definitely condolences to you, Kane. You know what I mean? Because I know that it's a special bond that you have when you first coming up with somebody and y'all first make records and you know what I mean? Y'all only believe in yourselves and then after that, the whole world believes what y'all believe. That's a special bond right there. You know what I mean? Uh, and just to be to travel with somebody all over the world and just do so many shows. It's like, you know what I mean? So condolences to my brother Kane. But to be conduct to connect it to somebody like Big Daddy Kane. All right, you came in the group. That could have been all you did. You know what I mean? But he kept going. You know what I mean? He ends up getting on the radio. Um, then he ends up helping people like Notorious, you know? Well, we knew him as Biggie Smalls at the time, but Notorious B.I.G. and all this type of shit. Um, he was a great party DJ. See, what I, what I used to notice, like when he was on the radio and he used to have to come up with those mixes every day, Yo, he would, you could tell he would just, he loved hip hop. And he was a creative DJ, like his transitions and, you know, his knowledge of different genres and different um, geographical areas and music. And, and yo, I'm telling you, Mr. C, Gots to be one of the greatest DJs all around. Yeah, there's niggas that could probably scratch, you know what I mean? Better, like, you know, like if you focus on one thing or whatever, like, but I'm talking about he could scratch, he could mix, he could, you know what I mean? He's a show DJ. Um, man, he's DJed for us before at shows, you know what I mean? Where our DJ wasn't there and it's like, all right, Mr. C. You know what I mean? Mr. C gonna do it because he's the, he's an all around DJ. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. I noticed some years back that it seemed like he lost some weight. Didn't really know what it was about. Um, <laughs> cut the shit. But sometimes when people <laughs> look at me. Sometimes when people lose weight, you know, it's like you can tell if it's a healthy loss or if it's a sudden, like, you know, is it a sickness type of loss? Is it a gastric bypass type of loss? Sometimes it just doesn't look right. You know what I mean? That I don't know. They just sometimes they just look weak after the the weight loss. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like kind of looked that way to me you know he didn't look like <clears throat> he lost the weight in a strong kind of way you know um but you know what i mean i wasn't in a position at the time to really approach him and ask him about certain things unfortunately you know when Let's talk about the elephant in the room. When the things came out about about the brother's lifestyle, um, as it concerned, you know, what he was doing with those individuals, um, I had did a an an interview, basically saying like, "Nah, that ain't hip hop. I don't." I don't condone that, you know what I mean? Like, I could love you as a person, respect you as a DJ and all of that type of shit, but certain things, you know what I mean? I can't support in your pub, in your personal life. And that goes with everybody. Like that's, you know what I mean? That should be um, almost expected, 
You know what I mean? You're going to find out a lot of shit about some of your favorite rappers later on and find out, ooh, this motherfucker was foul as a person. You know what I mean? But did they make some ill shit? Did they do, you know, did they contribute to hip hop um, in a way that made it better as far as like giving you happiness as far as listening to their music and having a hit and all of that um yeah they did you know what i mean none of y'all could y'all could talk all the shit you want about r kelly but guess what he still has some great ass fucking music and it's undeniable and you could be like ah, oh, i don't fuck with him as a person or you know yeah but you still can't deny what this man did as an artist so that's where i stand really with mr c you know what i mean he was kind of upset with me <laughs> over the um over the interview i did and you know there was a time where um he'd see me backstage at shows and want to walk the other way and um you know he'd play brand nubian records on the radio but then purposely not play my part and shit like that. You know what I mean? Now, I must say, not too long ago, I feel like Mr. C was on the radio. He was playing a brand new being joint, and he let it play to the end. He played my part. I was like, oh, shit. I think Pooh Bye might have heard it, too. Like, you know what I mean? And, and I think we was kind of like, oh, shit, maybe he's, you know what I mean? Maybe he forgive you. Maybe he's over that. You know what I mean? I don't know. Hopefully he was. Um, Cause I never meant any malicious intent towards him. You know what I mean? Directly. I can, I could love you as a person and not <clears throat> like some of your characteristics. You know what I mean? You got, you have a family member that you love, <clears throat> but they got a nasty attitude that you don't love. I love you, don't love your attitude. Love you, I don't love your um your ways and actions. A1 Drizzy, peace, was good. So, I say that to say um Yeah, I wish I could have told Mr. C to his face like, "Yo, man, fuck all the bullshit that you about, man." You definitely one of the greatest DJs. Cause I, and I've seen them. You know what I mean? I've seen a hell of a lot of them. Like I don't want to say I've seen all the DJs, but I've seen a hell of a lot of DJs from, from the inception of hip hop up until now. Um, and a lot have come and gone. You know, this that's another thing. Like Mr. C was around for a minute. Like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so all I could say is, man, rest in peace, Mr. C, man, and, you know, hopefully what he's done in hip-hop will overshine any kind of negativity that people may try to associate with his name, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just leave it at that. I know it's a shock for many people. Like what? Mr. C passed? Like, yeah, it is a shock. Um, and we definitely, he definitely will be missed. Terrell McMiller. Thank you, my brother. That's, that's, that's Godcast family right there. That's a regular brother right there. He said, much love. LJ, RIP, Mr. C, Wrath of Cain. He really caught wreck on the wheels. Hell yeah, he did. See, I started as a DJ, so I I always um admired the DJs that that MCs would like big up in their songs. You know what I mean? There was a time when the MC and the DJ were a thing, and you know, Mr. C step to me. You know what I mean? Like and then that's his time now. Get on, get on down. You know what I mean? Like, 
fucking damn Master J. Damn, damn, damn Master J. You know what I mean? Like that was that hip hop shit. You don't even see shit like that no more. Like they don't even give the DJ his love no more. Like who is the DJ for, you know, any of these dudes right now? Like a lot of dudes have a, 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 a tour DJ, but they don't talk about these dudes on their records. It's like DJ Premier is the DJ for Guru, for Gangstar. You know what I mean? Like he had a DJ in the group. Like nowadays, it would just be, it would have just been Guru and his DJ who be, you know, who he brings on tour with him who makes beats too. You know what I mean? We would have never even, like, maybe even known who a, 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 a premiere was had the DJ not been um, put on a pedestal back then. Uh-oh. They go loud, Sippa. They go Mr. Loud, Sippa, over there. First of all, how's my lighting look? I got a new light. I got a new um Yeah, digger. I know, I know, I know. Digger digger in the house. D uh digger said you can't get a real DJ or a real rap battle in 2024. Oh my god, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Hey, man. This motherfucker. Yo. Come here. The fuck? God damn. This nigga. Trying to fucking talk about the DJ and Mr. C and lapping up fucking. God damn. Goodness gracious. Pardon me, y'all. Oh, but digger, you ain't never lie. You can't get a real DJ or a real rap battle in 2024. And yes, we're going to get to that hoe ass shit that you, man, fucking J. Cole. Oh, my goodness. Um, But I just wanted to make sure, did, did, did I finish my train of thought on just DJs and the importance of the DJ and how great a DJ Mr. C was. Did, did, did we fully understand that? You know what I mean? Did we get that from this segment? I hope so. Because like I said, see, this how you drink quietly, my man. Look. See, that's not that loud, right? Um... Yeah, because uh, Mr. C, man, hell of a DJ, hell of a DJ. Oh, and I was talking about my light. Yeah, I got a new light. Um, yeah, it's got a bigger, like, uh, what do they call this? Like, like when like the fucking, I don't know, expands the light. It, it's like a circular light. I had like a, a, a panel light before, and this is like a circular light, and then you put the big ass fucking bonnet on the bitch <laughs> with the white shit and then it got the honeycomb shit to go over that and you know yeah it's just supposed to make your shit look more professional looks nice okay thank you thank you thank you <laughs> he says sit bro sound like he guzzling gallons Karis Knopflin, peace. Drew Ford, peace. I know, right? Goodness gracious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I had to, um, I had to, uh, what I have to do for my key light. It, I actually get need to, uh, recharge it. So I had to like come up with a workaround for my, no, my fill light. That's what it's called. The fill light. But I figured it out. That's my light over here. Anyway, uh, I guess Digger is helping me right now segue into other shit. Peace, God. Peace, truly Zambian. What's good, King? Glad you can make it. I know it's a little late over there for you. But we always appreciate you having you in the house. Um, If you're just getting here, we're talking about uh, Mr. C passing away. Said video looking extra sharp. Yeah, that's my new, that's my new light. I was just talking about Zambian. That's this new light I got. Yeah. Lighting is everything, people. <clears throat> so anyway, um, what in the whole ass shit is going on out here in this world? Um, So I reported last time that did I report about the, the the fucking oh no I reported that that Kendrick came with his little diss right Kendrick came with his diss on the future record right and I had heard a little snippet of a Drake response and this snippet was like seconds long, but I ain't gonna lie, that shit sounded hard. So in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, if Drake's response is like this, I wonder what J. Cole's response is gonna be. Now, shortly after having that thought, Oh, oh, stop it, stop it, digger. <laughs> she said the light skin's got to hold this L. Well, first of all, I'm not that light. I'm I'm in the brown skin crew, so uh, I will not be holding that with the light skin uh, constituency. Um, but I feel you. That is a light skin. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, so anyway, so I hear a response. Pooba hits me up and tells me to listen to this response from J. Cole to the Kendrick shit. So I go, I listen to it. You know, and I was excited to hear what he was going to do. So I'm listening to it. And it's like something about the first half beat was like, okay, I mean, this is maybe not the beat I would have chose, but okay. And I'm listening. He's saying some stuff in there. You know, there's some good lines and shit. But I'm like... Just something how it's supposed... How you how a, a disc record is supposed to make you feel? I'm not getting that feeling. Even though... He had some good lines you understand he was saying some shit like his pen his pen was penning but i wasn't getting that feeling then when the beat switched i that was a little better but it still wasn't like all in all it still wasn't all of that but it was seven minutes of all in all i'll say mid and that's just what it is. It was like high grade mid. You know what I mean? Like it'll get you high, I guess, if you smoke it. But it's not really what you was expecting when you went to the weed man. Right? But I appreciate in the spirit of hip hop, I appreciated the fact that he even, he came with some shit. 
Then the unthinkable happens. The hip hop unthinkable happens. I wake up to find out before Kendrick has a chance to clap back that J. Cole has apologized to Kendrick for his seven minute this? Digger said everybody's a soy baby. <laughs> Yo! Listen, I didn't even read this shit. Maybe I should find this shit. I didn't read it or nothing like that. I just heard about it. And just the fact that he would apologize for doing your hip hop duty. <laughs> like, like he did his job as a as a top hip hop nigga. They talking about the big three. I right, so as a, one of these big three niggas, people expected you to fucking come with some shit. Uh, I'm trying to find this goddamn apology. Where is this apology at? Uh, I'm looking for the shit. I don't know. Let's see. J. Cole upon uh... First person shooter, he called the shit. Huh? Uh, wait, hold on. Listen, I don't know. I can't find it. The actual like what he said but who fucking cares you know what i mean imagine cool <laughs> imagine cool modi apologized to fucking busy b back then <laughs> like you know what my bad i'm sorry for for even starting rap battles like you know i i, I don't know what was I, I was just in my feelings at the moment and i just felt like you know i really uh you know I felt like you were a fucking thief and all that bah diddy bosh. You need to keep that bullshit on hold. But you know what? I apologize for even saying that shit because, you know. Huh? Like, Nas and Jay Z had battles and shit on record and shit like that. Like, like, this nigga Nas said, fuck Jay-Z. Then they went on to fucking work together. I never heard an apology from either one of those guys for what they said about each other when the shit was going on. Am I, am I bugging? Imagine KRS-One. <laughs> Somebody said, ah, like, KRS is rolling over in his dreads. Yo, fuck, listen, we done had Shan on this show, okay? He's still ready to beef right now. <laughs> uh, 
If he had to, he's still ready to go right now. What's Digger said? Digger said, I really think Cole and Kendrick had a combo like get out the way, get out the way, nigga. Me and Drake about to take it there. Okay. Maybe. But even if he did have a convo, why why would you, you know what I mean? Why would you sit down like that? You know what I mean? Why would you? Yeah. Oh, Michelle Williams. Thank you, Michelle. She said, peace, Lord Jamal. Glad to finally catch you live. I'm a fan. Bless you and your family. Thank you, Michelle. We appreciate you. To hear, thank you for your super sticker. And once again, the motherfucking ambassador of Canada, Maestro Fresh West in the house. Thank you, Fambo. Appreciate you. As always. Um, all this it's it's almost like who raised these niggas as 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 as, as fucking um uh, my man would say who raised you like who the fuck raised these niggas? To apologize, like, like, Cole let the you gotta respond get to him, and he not really like that. Okay, but here's the thing: if you let that get to you, and and you went ahead and did it, you did it now, like, like. You can't fire shots. You called it a warning shot. You don't fire shots and then apologize for the shot. Because there's no taking a shot back. You don't know who could have got hit. All of that. Somebody could have got grazed. Now you talking about I'm sorry? Like, nah. Nah. Yeah, you 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 might have you might have hit homeboy with a lit, you know. Might have been a little blood. Can't apologize for that now. It's on. It's on and popping. Like, you know what I mean? Don't try to be an elite rapper. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, if that's, you know what I mean? If that's not your thing. But I thought, you was one of these niggas that thought like you was one of the nicest out here. You know what I mean? You don't have to be a tough guy and all this type of shit, but God damn. The, you know, the least you could do is stand by your fucking lyrics. Like, come on, man. What the fuck? They done been, they been done trying to get me to apologize for all kinds of shit. <laughs> shit from 30 years ago they want me to apologize for. What you think I did? Okay. Why you think they hate me? Y'all young motherfuckers talk about standing on business. This is what standing on business look like when you not flip floppy and wish washy and you do some shit and you like, yeah, I said it. What? And I'm a, and whatever comes with it comes with it. You know what I mean? And what? Terrell McMillan said, everybody who ripped Kendrick ass hard, no diddy, in the control battle had and still have no intention whatsoever in apologizing. <laughs> That's true. That's true. 
Thank you, Terrell. C.K. Kirkland. Why I couldn't have remember my boy's name. Thank you, Truly Zambia. <laughs> T.K. Kirkland. Who raised you? Who raised you? Nah, I mean, you're probably right about that. All of that, Digger. I, I hear you. You know what I mean? Um... And what's funny is he dropped his little, he dropped the little joint. And the next day, there was an earthquake in New York. And, and some tried to attribute it to him dropping his shit. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it wasn't that good. It was I, you know what I mean, but it it, it wasn't it wasn't earthquake uh, worthy. Um, I'd attribute that earthquake more to something that had to do with the eclipse, or rather than fucking this motherfucker dropping his little fucking whatever the fuck, you know, his warning shot that he apologized for. Like, he the type of nigga that'll step on your foot by accident. And not only, and not only say, pardon me, but, like, he'll go down and start wiping your foot off type of shit. Like, you know what I mean? First of all, he won't say pardon me. He'll say sorry. Okay? And there's a difference. Between when you say pardon me and when you say sorry, there's a, there's a, there's a difference. You know what I mean? Pardon me is like, accept that. You know what I mean? Pardon me, but if you don't pardon me, that's on you. You know what I mean? But pardon me. Sorry is like, oh, you know, I'm a sorry ass nigga. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know? Like, there's a difference. So you tell these motherfuckers, pardon me, man, if you need to. But don't be sorry. Don't be fucking sorry out here. You know what I mean? Nobody likes a sorry ass nigga. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> CJ said, I'm from QB. This is unacceptable. <laughs> you goddamn right this shit is unacceptable. Who the fuck making up these new rules out here? This shit crazy, CJ. Thank you. This shit is this shit is benoodles. Some of the shit that's going on out here. CM CM Brock one. Thank you. He said Cole said he couldn't sleep for two days after he wrote the diss. Are you serious? He couldn't sleep for two days. He felt so bad. He was tortured. I felt so bad. Some of the things I said, it was so harsh. I couldn't sleep for two days. Wow. Wow. I wonder if J. Cole's ever stepped on a roach in his life. Like, you know? It's like, actually, I haven't. First of all, I didn't have roaches coming up. Secondly, when I did finally see a roach, I used to catch and release. Like, oh, word? <laughs> so you never, never killed a roach in your life? Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, I see. I'll see what kind of mama you in. He said new 
So new rappers wear purses. What do you expect, King? I know, but I I ain't never see this guy wear a purse. You know what I mean? I ain't never seen this guy wear a purse. And as far as, you know, the newer rappers, like, first of all, it's not that I don't even listen to any of these big three niggas. How about that? Like, I appreciate the fact that they all can rap good. I, I acknowledge that. But none of them give me the feeling of, yo, I want to get this dude. I can't wait till his next tape come out. When it come out, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to be riding around to the shit. None of them give me that. So there's that. But I felt like J. Cole, I felt like he was trying to at least walk in some of the footsteps that more of the um golden age rappers walked in you know what i mean um yeah the fact that he you know grew dreads and he just i don't know he just seems like he's he respects <laughs> they said kendrick giving that boy nightmares um it just seems like he respects that type of era you know what I mean? And that he's a student of that era and that he studied um, things and situations from that era. And if that's the case, then he should know that apologizing is a motherfucking no-no. He should know that. He should know that. <sighs> but You know, like we said, this is the times we live in. Um, and yeah, shit is shit is shit is kind of crazy. Um, so let's talk about the earthquake and the eclipse, shall we? <laughs> Um, first of all, by a show of hands or, you know, by a show of whatever, how many of y'all actually felt the earthquake? Um, cause I did, but I know a lot of people that didn't. So how many of y'all felt that earthquake? <clears throat> Aline Workfield said Kendrick did control verse and has no intention of apologizing to anyone. Correct. Because he shouldn't. Because that's not what you do in hip hop. Excuse me. Pardon me. Drake, Drake and Meek Mill had their thing. And then it, I think, didn't they patch it up? But there was no apologies for, I don't remember Drake apologizing for that joint that he did. You know what I mean? And that's Drake. That's Drake. Like Drake is, come on. Come on. Oh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Why should two black guys ditch each other? Because it's a fucking sport. Because it's fucking, you know what I mean? It's part of some hip hop shit. It, it's part of lyrically showing, um, you know, who's the wittier, more crafty one. It's not a, it's not it's not like these guys are gonna take it to the street and all of that. Obviously, if he's having nightmares over this shit, imagine if he fucking put his hands on, you know, like come on. So it ain't gonna be none of that type of shit. So please, Falsa Doom. That's like saying, why does your last name have to be Doom? <laughs> Fuck out of here. Anyway. What are you saying, son? We are past that stage in hip hop. These two didn't come up in that environment of hip hop. Um, who says we're past that stage in hip hop? Who decided that? Um, uh, cause that's some bullshit. Um, 
and you don't have to come up in an environment to be aware of a certain environment to be educated on environment they both have older mentors dr dre motherfucking uh jay-z so what are we talking about here sir uh but thank you what you say zambian that little convo control verse wasn't spitting venom enough though uh-huh he's right about that too What's there to apologize for? The short guy literally says, I got love for you all. <laughs> Cetera. Let's not act like it was hit him up. <laughs> I'm not <thinking. laughs> None of this shit is hit him up. And if Pac was alive, <laughs> he'd have been like, man, that's what I said. It. That's how I felt at the time. You know what I mean? Even if motherfuckers pe pieced it up and all that type of shit, like, fuckers ain't you know what i mean and he said i fucked your wife and all that type of shit and that man shit nigga would apologize queen knight said it's good he apologized who are y'all who are these who raised y'all um let's see hang on Exo the MC said, this is the art of rap and both understand what was, what was happening. It's I'm better than you competition. This is hip hop. People talk beef with lack of understanding. This was a soft nigga that copped out of the sanctioned match. Factoroni. I concur. Thank you for uh, your donation, Expo the MC. Michelle Williams, thank you for your donation. She said, you always kept it real. You are so cool. Teach me how to be cool like you. Newark, New Jersey loves you and Ra. Well, that's what's up. Thank you. And we love Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> Shout out to ambassadors with some of the Best fried fish that you're gonna find around this motherfucker. Oh man, me and my brother love that ambassador's boy. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate you, Michelle. I appreciate everyone uh for your donations. Thank you. You see, I actually spend my shit on, you know what I mean? Production value and shit like that. Um So anyway, listen. Oh, we was I was trying to get to talking about the earthquake. So I'm outside and I just got finished walking the dogs. And I'm in front of the crib. And all of a sudden, what's what only thing I could describe it as, it kind of sounded like a train was approaching, right? Sound like a train was approaching. Peace, Aleem Workfield. He also said he'll murder, murderer them niggas, et cetera. Okay, I'm moving on from that shit. Thank you, but fuck them. So it felt like a train. Then I'm like, Yo, I'm feeling like fucking houses around me is starting to shake. And I'm like, I've been in an earthquake before out in Cali and shit. So I'm kind of knowing what this, this is feeling familiar to me. I'm like, is this a fucking, and before I could really like finish saying earthquake in my mind, now I'm seeing the cars and shit fucking shaking and shit. And I'm like, oh, nah, this is a fucking earthquake. Like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Um, but then, P. 
people's talking about they didn't some people talking about they didn't feel nothing you know what i mean then other people's like now some people's running outside though and now like, oh you know what i mean you feel that and i'm like yo it's right here the cars are shaking out this motherfucker like, you know what i mean like so i definitely felt the shit um where I was at, I'd say it would last a good 20 seconds, maybe. Um, and then, a little later on, there was a slight aftershock that came through. Um, and for that one, I more like felt the windows shaking because I was inside for that one. I felt like the windows start shaking more than i really felt the ground shaking but yeah it was a quite an experience to um feel that in in new york eric doug said flat earthquake yeah goddamn right it is <laughs> why you think they call it tectonic plates what's a plate look they don't call them tectonic balls <laughs> okay it's a tectonic plate, sir. Uh, that was also going to get to one of my um, points about this earthquake. Um, but thank you for, for, for helping me segue into that. Um, first of all, this, this earthquake was felt from about Baltimore all the way up to Boston, right? Meaning that expanse you felt the earth moving under you, right? But any other time when you're asked, when they ask, well, why don't we feel ourselves spinning on supposed ball? They'll tell you that the earth is too big for you to feel it. Well, how is it too big for you to feel it spinning, but it's not too big for you to feel it moving under your feet? I'll wait. <sighs> Answer. Because we would feel the slightest movement, if especially if we were spinning at a thousand thirty-seven and a third miles per hour. Um, but we feel nothing because there's nothing to feel when a stationary level pillars and at times there is a shifting of the plates they even describe them as plates that shift over each other parallel type of plates not round balls but plates tectonic plates yep <sighs> But anyway, uh, so yeah, did y'all feel it? Did you not feel it? Because I definitely felt that shit. Um, I don't know. It's not localized energy. It's absolutely not localized. If you're feeling it from Baltimore to Boston, that's not localized. So sorry, Will Till. But yeah, that's not, that's not, uh, it's not a good answer. Not a good answer. Oh. Also, did y'all, um, did y'all see the eclipse? Did y'all watch the eclipse? Um, no, it's not some white people shit solo dolo. The ball is some white people shit, actually. Copernicus, Copernicus made that up. So uh, watch your fucking mouth. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, the eclipse. They said it, the next one will be in 20 years or some shit like that, right? Solar eclipse. First of all... 
if you didn't have the glasses, you couldn't even see the shit. Like, I'm all, I was thinking that it was going to be like dark out this motherfucker. Track phone virtual. Thank you. He said, you ever think anyone who's gone to Jamaica has ever been like, I, hey, we like turn off some of this reggae music for a little while. I'm not sure what you mean, sir, but uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, they were acting like it was going to be 90% coverage here in New York. So I'm thinking like it's going to get mad dark outside. You know what I mean? Like it should anyway. But that wasn't the case. Um, it still looked like the sun was out. Um, it only was until one of my neighbors let me hold the glasses is where you can see how the sun looked, you know partially covered and shit like that um did y'all did, did y'all expect well then you know get out of here we'll tell fuck out of here bye if you can't do it you ain't gotta do it <laughs> But you ain't going to be in here with your laughing emojis and act like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? On something you ain't never studied. Like, get the fuck out of here. XO the MC. I came up under and was taught by the gods of rap like yourself. Can you educate everyone on the difference between beef and battle rap, please? I mean, certainly beef. Beef is some real shit. Beef is like when people get hurt. People's when people get cut, stabbed, shot, you know what I mean? Killed, put in the hospital, fucking legs and arms broken. That's what happens in beef. You know what I mean? In a rap battle, motherfuckers come up with the illest shit to say against another motherfucker. You know what I mean? Come up with different rhyme schemes, all this type of shit. Present it uh, in a way so that the crowd will feel that it's going to be entertaining and all of this type of shit. And at the end of that, motherfuckers go home. Okay? That's what that's the difference between beef and a rap battle. And some of y'all don't know how to differentiate the two. Y'all believe that any kind of differences of, of opinion is a beef. It's not. It's not. Even if they call themselves each other bitch ass niggas within those rap battles, as long as it doesn't cross the line into beef where, you know what I mean? People are getting physically touched. You know what I mean? Then it's not beef. Okay. So XO the MC, I hope um, that helps. I hope people understand. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ultra Instinct said, no glasses. I want that old, dirty, raw sunlight for my irises. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> um, now, what I will say, right? Listen, we got to, we got to, part of learning is unlearning, right? And not taking nothing on face value, right? So first of all, you know, as somebody that knows what I know, um, no, that's not true, Leon Brown. What are you talking about? Everybody would see the eclipse. First of all, the, the sun is not as far as away as you're talking about. If you're, if, and if it was, everybody would see the sun at all times. The whole fucking planet would, half the planet would be lit up. That's not how it works. And they actually showed y'all the path of the sun. They showed you the path of how the sun was moving across the fucking, the uh, United States and what degree of, of uh, eclipse you would see. 
they actually showed you how the sun was moving, not us. Um, but it's ironic that y'all could watch that and not really even let that register. But here's something that didn't really register for me until, like, I really thought about it. And y'all can say whatever y'all want to say. Um, but just take it in. So they tell us that during an eclipse, right, that the moon is what is passing in front of the sun, right? And that's what's blocking out the sun. Okay. And we've accepted that for a long time, but then just let's just use our common sense for a second here. First off, we're able to see the moon <clears throat> in the daytime. When we look up at the moon in the daytime, <clears throat> you can see right through it. You can see the blue sky. And then when it turns nighttime, you can see it, you can see black through it at times and you can see stars and all that type of shit through the moon. So number 1, that would lead you to believe if you really know the signs, because it's not a rock like they would like you to say. But anyway, that the moon is transparent, right? Now, let's just say it's transparent. Or even if it wasn't transparent, right? We're able to usually see the moon in the sky. So why did we not see the moon approaching the sun? Covering it. And as it crossed, moving away and then visibly being able to see the moon. And what f and what moon phase were we in at this time as well? Hmm. What was the moon phase at that time? Were we in a full moon? It's just something to think about. Now, I don't know what, what, what is really blocking the sun. If it's not the moon, could it be the black sun that they talk about? I don't know. I don't know. But if you think about it, why didn't we see the moon approaching the sun? and then moving away from the sun. Do we have an explanation for this? <clears throat> no, the, far, the sun, it's not that the sun is far brighter than the moon. We see the sun and the moon in the daytime all the time. We see them all the time. The sun be out and then the moon be out sometimes. You know what I'm saying? When it gets to, you know, Four o'clock, let's say, this time where you could see the sun and the moon out at the same time. If the moon was approaching the sun, you're not going to tell me that, oh, the sun is so damn bright that we could not see the, the moon at all as it approached. The moon's not transparent, then how do you then why do you see the blue sky through it in the daytime, sir? Please explain. What are you seeing at that time? That's right, Ray Brown. Thank you. That's all you got to do. Instead of snap questions and, and feeling like you got to be quick to answer some shit that you don't really know, do like Bray Brown. I got to do some research to answer that question. I, I appreciate that, Ray Brown. I appreciate that. Because that's what we all need to do. Instead of just assuming that we know some shit, 
that these motherfuckers drilled in your head in third grade. Um, yeah. Let's just start looking into certain things now as adults. Okay? Oh, yeah? Solo dolo? I need to sign up for a physics class? Why? So they can lie to me about certain things, about how certain things operate in the world? Because the white man knows best, right? And his physics classes are the ones that, you know, that's 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 what it is. We got to believe everything he tells us, right? Do you want to get put on timeout? Watch your mouth. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Uh, where can you watch Old World Order? That's my man. Um, that's my man Sean Hibbler's movie. Go to Sean Hibbler. I don't think the movie's out yet. That was just a trailer for it. But uh, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Celeb Nils, what's good? I just saw my man Celeb out in the world. Celeb said, they literally have a world police that stops you from exploring the planet. Y'all better wake up. Thank you, Celeb. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, shout out to Celeb Neils. I just seen him at the, uh, what was it? My man Scrams was DJing at some shit in Manhattan for one of the kids from, uh, from the Power Show was having a birthday party or some shit like that. I was up in there with my, my brother Reality. And I seen the homie Celeb Neils up in there. And we did what we did. We did what we do. Violate the spot. Just start lighting up. You know. <laughs> Wasn't nobody else smoking in there neither. You know what I mean? It was like, fuck it. We gonna, we gonna christen this motherfucker. It is what it is. You know what I mean? And a person stepped to us like, could you put that out? Nope. Nope. I can't. <laughs> yeah, but nah, that was a good night. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to. That's all I wanted to drop on you. And, and oh, here's also what I wanted to drop on you, right? Because a lot of y'all motherfuckers be like talking about, oh, Jamar's a conspiracy theorist, right? You talk about conspiracy theorists, right? As if having a theory about a conspiracy is a bad thing, right? And it made me think, right? You know when y'all love conspiracy theorists? when it's the police you know who's a conspiracy theorist a detective an investigator of a crime you see because they're not a part of the crime so they don't have all the information on the crime there's only clues and evidence that a crime has been committed. And you expect that investigator to go out there and do his due diligence to try to investigate these clues to see if his theory about the crime is correct. Up until that time, that has a confession from the criminal, or he's got actual, you know, documentation. These motherfuckers is conspiracy theorists, and you love them. <laughs> you love them. 
you want these conspiracy theorists working on the murder case of, of your family member, coming up with different scenarios of how to figure this shit out. Thank you, Mo Get It. Peace and love to you. Appreciate you. Conspire, Leah Leon. Um, yeah, but here's the thing. He said, yep, verifiable evidence. Yep. And you don't have no verifiable evidence that you're on a spinning ball. Only something that somebody told you. There's actually verifiable evidence that you're not moving. Um, but <clears throat> a lot of times, again, the detective doesn't have verifiable evidence while he's conducting the investigation. He has leads. The family's like, have you caught him yet? No, we have leads. I'm not sure. We think it may be these guys from this area. But we're not sure. But we know there's a crime has been committed. We know that. We know lies have been told. We know that. But while you're in the midst of an investigation of a crime, of the murder of truth. Don't come to me with all this bullshit and these labels to try to, um, to try to defuse or try to um, make negligent someone's efforts in trying to find the truth. And you don't have to go to a police investigation school to, or any kind of school for that matter to be, to investigate something. That's human nature to investigate. That's what we do. You don't need nobody's piece of paper that says, okay, you, now you can officially look into things out here in the world. You're qualified. No, you're qualified just as a human being. Okay? So to all my investigators out there, shout out to y'all. You know who the fuck you are. That's right. Oh, definitely A1 Drizzy. Hey, yo, shout out to my man, Five Mikes. I'm going to bring him on the show soon. You got the new joint, New Vuitton Dawn. Just dropped the video. Go check that out. Um, yeah. That's my dude. Truly Zambian said, a moment to salute my brothers and sisters who are, who are this evening marking the end of the fasting period, made it through the entire month and did not waver. Respect. Solo Dolo said, Jamar, keep it real. You ever been to them Diddy parties back in the 90s? Uh, absolutely, but not the ones you're talking about. <laughs> I've been to the public parties. See, what Diddy was a party promoter at one point, okay? He used to throw parties at this place called the Red Zone, but that was one of the main places. But he used to be all over throwing parties. Him and this, this broad named Jessica Rosenblum. Okay, and they used to have some of the best parties like in New York City. And then I guess they took their shit on the road or whatever. But these were not no 
fucking freak parties. This was not no freak off shit. This was in regular clubs with regular people and regular celebrities. Like it was some hip hop shit. You know what I mean? But it was upscale hip hop shit. Um, but the DJs was rocking. There always used to be a lot of broads and you know what I mean? It was just, it was a good look as far as parties are concerned, but it was nothing like no, you know what I mean? No mansion shit where you open the door and some freak off shit is going on. It was none of that type of shit. I ain't never been to none of those type of parties ever in my life, anywhere, ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not with a celebrity, not regular people, nothing. I ain't never fucking been to no freaky shit like that. So, yeah, Solo Dolo. A lot of people have been to the Diddy parties. Shit, I think Digger was on here. Digger said she'd been to the Diddy parties back in the days, but not, not the infamous freak-offs. Uh-uh, we ain't go to those. Oh, who's saying dumb shit like this? With a powerful telescope, you can see from New York to Madrid, but that's not possible due to the curvature. Of the no, that's not why. It's only through to, due to the atmosphere. Atmospheric conditions at some point act like a fucking a, a piece of glass, and the farther you go, the more atmosphere there is until eventually you can't see a certain distance. So knock it off. It has nothing to do with curvature. I hate when people just make shit up and think a motherfucker don't know who's actually studied. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, <laughs> going down in history as the diddler <laughs> is diabolical. Yeah, it is diabolical. Um, It is diabolical. Solo Dolo said, I need to get on Club Shay Shay. I mean, why? <laughs> why? Somebody said, Ray J has booty goons. Thing. I feel like I heard some shit like that out of his own mouth. Yeah, he, yeah. didn't he threaten? Didn't he threaten Fab with some shit like that? <laughs> Cheyenne, why are you making things up? Yes, it would. Times are different. Yes, because the sun is moving around. That's why the times are different moving around the plate okay and it only shines at certain places it doesn't it on the sun has only the light has a certain distance it doesn't fucking you know what i mean shine over the whole thing like you th are imagining because first of all it's not as big as they say it is and it's not as far as away okay right here in our atmosphere with us okay stop with the you're trying to like make up shit in your mind like oh it would be different if you think about it no you haven't actually thought about it that's why you're saying this now hey y'all will get it one day oh the ice cream man is out boy he's the ice cream man is fucking trying to get that bread Celeb said, no funny shit. Why niggas be treating Fab like he a scrub? Niggas always talking some dominating shit to Fab. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I would say no, A1 Drizzy. 
I would say it's actually heating up the atmosphere. It's not a fireball. If you think about it, the closer you get to it, it should get hotter, but actually that's not the case. It actually gets colder the higher you up you go, closer towards the sun. Why is that? Because it's thinner atmosphere. So the heavier, more dense atmosphere is being heated up by the sun's rays. Um, and the less dense atmosphere is not being heated as much. That's why it's colder up higher. But yet you're closer to the sun. It should be the opposite. It should get much hotter the closer you get to it. <sighs> yeah. Just stuff. Oh, show me a picture of the video of a round one. Cool rod. I'll show you plenty of pictures. Can you show me a picture of a round one? An actual Nassau picture where the, where the shit looked back at Earth? Please show me because it doesn't exist, sir. But nice try. No, it's not a theory. The ball is a theory. Oh! Yep, NASA is fake. NASA photoshops everything. Correct. I already had Brother Sanchez on the show. You're goddamn right he's an expert on it. There we go. Can someone show me a real photo of the Earth? I'll wait. We'll wait. It's not been Photoshop. Yeah, well, anyway. I feel like I saw some shit earlier, but it turned out to not be true, so I don't even want to bring it up. <laughs> It was a video of Diddy shouting out all these names, but it turns out it's just people that was going to be coming. It was an old video. People going to be coming to a party that he had or something like that. It almost sounded like he was naming names. But that's not what it was. Um. All right, yeah, so I listen. I think that's all I really had for today, to be honest. Uh, once again, rest in peace, Mr. C. Um, hopefully it's not rest in peace to the real MCs, okay? Because all this apologizing shit. New generation, don't look at this. Don't look at that example and, and feel like that's what you're supposed to do. And don't listen to any of the people in this in this goddamn room. Who's a, oh, yeah, Kendrick. I mean, J. Cole, he should have apologized. I mean, why should guys even battle anymore? Shut up with all that bullshit. Uh, yeah. And what else? As we wrap, shout out to Digga Digga. Uh, he said, right on time, it's mid. It's midnight. All right, truly Zambian, I appreciate you for uh, sticking it out with us, man. As always, you know you need to fucking be kicking out some of these fucking trollers and shit like that. Bitch ass motherfuckers getting on my nerves. That's right, A1 Drizzy. Yeah, you too, A1 Drizzy. You got the power. I see that, that wrench next to your name. You know what to do. I give y'all the blessing. You ain't having all the, you know what I mean? You ain't gonna come on my channel and, and think you're gonna be trolling. You ain't did no research. Fuck out of here. All right, anyway, y'all. Listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for coming through. Um... 
everybody who donated. I appreciate y'all. Let me just check, make sure I didn't miss anyone. Uh... Oh, shit. I did miss a few. Hang on. Got a man, Boom Bap, said, which is worse? Three stacks, three stacks dropping a flute album, J. Cole apology after diss, or brother P. Dookie in the Bussy Gate scandal. No diddy. Oh, shit. I mean... The scandal's pretty damn bad. <laughs> um, for hip hop, the apology is bad. I didn't even hear the flute album, but that was just disappointing. You know what I mean? That was just disappointing. But thank you, got a man, boom, bap. Um. Track phone virtual magazine said, you ever think anyone who's gone to Jamaica? Oh, there you go again. How could we like turn off some of this reggae music for a little while? I don't know. Maybe. I bet you white people gone there and did that. Okay. No. Okay. I, I got all of these then. Oh, and I, okay. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I guess I had missed that one. That was the one that I missed. All right. We're all caught up then. <laughs> Thank you, Mo. Get it. All right, I appreciate everybody. Um, y'all have a safe rest of y'all week. Safe weekend. Next week is going to be in the 70s. That's going to be nice. That's going to be nice. Transform into that warmer gear. I'm kind of tired of these big coats and all this bullshit. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's get into some. You know what I mean? Polo shirts. You know what I mean? Short sleeves and all that type of shit there. Sweatpants and all that. You know what I mean? But, uh, man, I love y'all. Digga digga. Much love. Godfrey, much love. Artie Stacks, much love. Much love. And rest in peace to my man. Motherfucking Rage. Fact checker Rage. Rage Cage. I was thinking about Rage the other day, man. Miss my man Rage. Great brother. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. I'm getting ready to be out. Um, this episode, I'm not fucking playing the music, like I said, because you know, I feel like they're trying to do some funny shit. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a new intro beat from scratch with no samples at all. Uh, anyway, y'all be safe out there. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs>